Assalamu alaikum. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, I uh, will give a few minutes for people to gather. We're starting a bit early so that uh, we give them a chance uh, to log in. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll start in a few minutes, uh, just um, giving people some uh, a chance to, to log on. We'll start in Shalat Ali in one minute. Okay, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ta'assa bihi wa attaba'a sunnatahu la yawmitin. Um, inshallah ta'ala today we will continue where we left off last time. And last time we talked about the need for a system to, um, for the human beings to behave according to, 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 uh, so that they can satisfy their needs uh, without uh, one 
need being satisfied at the expense of the other. And uh, then and we said that that is really beyond the capability of a human being to produce. And therefore, we need that kind of uh, guidance from somebody who does not have, or the, the, the source who does not have the deficiencies and the limitations that the human being has when it comes to this. In addition, of course, we talked about the, the, that the human beings have the instinct of worship and the need to worship the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, since the Creator, uh, what pleases Him, what does not please Him, what, how He wants us to worship Him is not under our senses. We are not able to intellectually um, reach. Then, of course, we have to be told about Him. We have to be told by uh, this Creator how He wants to be worshipped. Because it's not a matter of worship for us as human beings because we can worship in the wrong manner. Uh, and uh, just like the Arabs in the time, the pagans in the Jahiliya, and how they took idols as an example. Or people can come up with all kinds of th ways to satisfy their instinct of religion, you know, the religiosity in them or the, the religious inclinations in them. But that does not make it the correct way. That, that's why it has to be guided by the revelation so that we know how to worship the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today we are going to talk about exactly that. We are going to talk about the Prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and uh, what, how we know that he is a Prophet. Just keep in mind before we, we get into the discussion here is that this, the, this series inshallah ta'ala is uh, presenting a, a summary of, of, the, um, of, of the idea or the proofs or, or the, the subject itself. And inshallah ta'ala, the, the detailed one will come afterwards where, where we can get, dig deeper inshallah um, and discuss the, the, the proofs in more detail and as well as, as countering some of the issues that are raised by um, the people, uh, you know, the disbelievers or the people who have doubts or questions that people might have about, about these things. So we will get into them inshallah ta'ala. And that's which brings me to, to a point before I start. If anybody has any question that, that you want us to, um, to present, to include in our presentation, uh, please do suggest it, send it to Al Arqam Institute, send it to, um, you know, just post it, and inshallah ta'ala, we will address it um, if, you know, in, in the series, as some people have already approached us for it, and inshallah ta'ala, we will address them. So uh, now we can go into, into the Prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and to start with, we need to, to uh, under, you know, make a, the, the, uh, a, a certain statement. And that which is, the Prophet or the proof that the Rasul is a messenger of God. You know, that Allah Ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he actually sent Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is, uh, is not one proof. There are proofs for it. It is not one proof that is uh, talking about it, it, that, it, that actually shows that. So if for us to, to, to um, you know, to know or to, to go into these proofs, uh, it would require us to go into uh, his personality, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the uh, society that he was in, the way that he was brought up, the, his mannerisms, um, his telling uh, about or for, foretelling about the futures, about the future and what, what um, you know, what, trans, what will transpire after him, about his victories, his battles, his, the Sharia, the very Sharia that he, he came up with, uh, that, that he introduced, excuse me, or that he introduced the people, the, the, the laws, the set of laws and how they work together, all of that, you know, that can be, inshallah ta'ala, will be uh, presented in detail. Today, uh, you know, we will discuss one item and one item only, and of course, because the most famous uh, proof for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most well-known, of course, is the Quran Al-Kareem. If you ask any Muslim about uh, what makes Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a prophet, they will point to the Quran. Now, they might know what, you know, where the, the, the how the proofs are, or may not, may not, but they know that the Quran Al-Kareem is the, the one that's held in, in high esteem, and that it is the proof for the prophet of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So today I'm going to focus on that, on the Quran al Karim, and uh, you know, but not in uh, about the the um, uh, you know the miracle itself in terms of the, the linguistics of it, etc. Because again, that we'll discuss inshallah ta'ala in the next series. But I want to focus on one thing, 
to discuss the content of the Quran al Karim. The content of the Quran al Karim, in while or in the context, in the context of who introduced the Quran al Karim, who brought the Quran al Karim, and that is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we need to do some research in the Quran to uh, to to start discussing the Quran al Karim, just keeping Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam as uh, the content. Who was the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What are what are his characteristics, or what were his characteristics? Uh, what uh, you know, uh, could he have produced such a material? So of course, when the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the things that are undoubtful and the things that are agreed upon and well reported, because the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the probably the most studied personality in the in 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 history. It's a uh, you know, and the 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 people by the people who loved him or the people who hated him. Um, because the Muslims view him as uh, his actions, his behavior, you know, his his uh, his uh, um, his utterances, his behavior, his everything is a uh, you know approvals are a source of legislation, and the non-Muslims are the the ones who uh, are looking to find a problem in him. They who are looking and they are scrutinizing him to do the same. So we uh, we studied him, uh, you know, Muslims studied and reported every little detail about him to the point where they talked about how many teeth showed when he smiled, how he turned, how he ate, how many fingers he ate with, you know, how he sat, you know, uh, how he used to walk, etc., etc., etc. Even the most intimate and the most uh, personal uh, aspect of the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was actually reported by. His wives, uh, you know, and they reported how he was with them at in the house, how he used to bathe, how he used to, etc. So that it shows that he is well, a, a very well studied, very uh, much scrutinized uh, personality. And to start with, we want to, we need to understand that even before he claimed that he was a messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, before he came up or he came with the, with the Quran al Karim, we have to understand that his he is not. He was not a person who had problems or uh, um, uh, issues raised about his character. And then after he became a prophet, he became exemplary, uh, exemplary in that. Actually, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was well known about uh, even amongst his opponents before Islam and afterwards that he was a Sadiq Al-Amin, that he was truthful and he was trustworthy, that he is not somebody who is going to lie, you know, not jokingly, not seriously, he was not somebody with bad mannerisms. He was not somebody with, uh, who would harm others, cheat others, um, hurt others. He was not looking for fame. He was not looking for a position amongst the people. Uh, you know, well, again, before Islam or after Islam. So you find even in, in uh, 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 after, after the people, after he became, came with the message, after the, the, he came with the message, the people of Quraysh still trusted him with their money when he did the hijrah and they were conspiring to kill him they were actually gathering people you know to kill him and the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam before he left when they trusted him enough to still they kept their money with their money is with them as trust uh, as trust and amana with the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and still before he left the same people who were conspiring to kill him he made sure that he left the you know uh, the instructions this money goes to this person that money goes to that person so he was well known or to be trustworthy and he was well known to be a truthful person before Islam, after Islam, by the people who believed in him and the people who did not believe in him. Okay, And he, when, even after Islam and after he uh, uh, came with the message of Islam, he was not looking for a position. They came to him and they told him, if you want to be the king, the Arabs, the Quraysh did not have a kingship. They were offering to, to alter the entire system and make him the, the, the king. To make him a king, in kunta turidu mulkan malakna. If you want to be the, the 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 position of the of a king, we will make you one. If you want to one wealth, will give you. And he said, I was not sent for that. I that that's not that was not his interest. Even afterwards, in the in the life of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, after he started actually, you know. Uh, 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 Going back and forth with the with the Romans and the, the 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 Persians and you know in other words the state started expanding and started you know wealth start, started coming and still he lived the most simplest lives where he could have if that's what he was looking for he would have lived very luxuriously. 
So my, the point here is to put perspective that he is not the person, person who was known to be a liar or a person to be claiming something, not even amongst people, so how about what he believed in to be from God uh, himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing is that we need to also establish another fact, that the Quran that was introduced by Muhammad sallallahu was introduced by an unlettered man, meaning the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not a lettered person, was, could not read or write. And that was not exclusive to the Prophet sallallahu that was the norm at that time. The norm was, the norm was that people did not know how to read and write. That Allah Ta'ala says in Quran Kareem, He is the one who sent in the Ummiyeen, the people who could not read or write, you know, Rasulan minhum, a messenger from amongst them. And he alayhi salam, it was an established fact that he did not know how to read or write until the very end of his life. Because till the very end of his life, you had scribers to write the Quran for him, and you had people who were writing letters and reading letters for him when he corresponded with other uh, uh, leaders in, in, uh, in Arabia or out of Arabia. So the, the point here is that he was an unlettered person, and he was not somebody who was hanging around or in the vicinity of people of uh, you know of knowledge, people with li of literature, people who were who were a, a, a um, aware of uh, other than what pertained to the society uh, of Mecca itself. He was he was somebody who uh, at some point was a shepherd. You know, at some point he was a, a merchant. He so he did some business, some trading, and he even how many times he left uh, uh, Mecca. To go to uh, Syria, they counted you know, on, on those business trips, on those uh, as, a, as a merchant. They were counted literally between two, three of them, you know, uh, something like that in, in single digits. That would, it would go and uh, uh, buy, sell, and come back to, uh, to Mecca. So he was not somebody who was, uh, uh, you know, uh, out. Uh, exposed to the world and exposed to the scholars in the world and the people who have had knowledge of uh, previous books. He was not somebody, you know, not at all. You know, he was living a normal life in Mecca and Mecca was an unlettered uh, uh, society. And they were a, uh, and that's also important, the society itself was a pagan society. People were worshipping idols and they were, as I said, unlettered. And there were people who were, they were, uh, a, uh, they were not known of knowledge, they were not known of science, they were not known of literature, they were, not, they were unlettered people. What they were, or what they had pride in, was the Arabic language. And that's what really, that was the, the, the main feature in the, in, the, in the society. And they, they took pride in it, and in, in, and in, in speech, and in eloquence, uh, that they absolutely had. Beyond that, they did not have that. They were they were away actually from the Roman civilization. In other words, Christianity and the books of about Christianity and Judaism and the Old uh, Testament and the New Testament. This was all absent from the Arabian Peninsula, from Mecca specifically. Um, and uh, uh, the 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 majority, as I said, the uh, absolute majority of them, except for you know the exception to the rule, they were unlettered people. And now on top of that, all these uh, um, those books uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the Christian books or the the Jewish books, the Jewish uh, scripture, uh, Christian or Jews, they were not translated at that time. So they they. Uh, all of that was foreign to that environment which Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam grew up in and stayed in for 40 years. So all of a sudden, when the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes to a, a uh, uh, with the Quran al Karim, and all of a sudden you find this man is talking about what the Quran is talking about the story of Adam and uh, his wife, how, where, and how the how creation started, and how they were in Jannah, and how Iblis came and deviated them from the Jannah and tempted them to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they left the Jannah and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them to the earth. And then he talked about the children of Adam, you know, and that story, how could Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have access to that kind of information if he had no access to the, uh, the story, the books that were a, um, presenting them? He had not, he did not even have the skill to read such books, the books that were not translated. How could he introduce such a story in the vivid details that we have in the Quran Karim repeated in various places about the story of Adam and his, the creation of Adam 
and uh, his spouse. Do you have the same thing with the story of Nuh alayhi salam? The story of Nuh and the flood and how, how uh, Nuh, how long he stayed with his with his people, inviting them and how they reacted to him and how he built the the uh, uh, the ship to to uh, to carry him and the uh, the, the, the believers, etc. How did he know about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam? Ibrahim and his children. How did he know about the, sto the story of the kings, the pharaohs, the, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam in Egypt and giving it in detail of how Yusuf alayhi salam and how long he was in, uh, in prison and how the, the, as a child and how they moved to Egypt, etc., etc. All of these stories, the stories of other prophets, the stories of Ismail, uh, uh, Ishaq, Yaqub, Elias, Yunus, Hud, the people of Salih, all, all of these stories, he had no access to them. He had no access to them. He had, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, he had no access to them, not in literature, not in company, not in the uh, proximity uh, to the people who had that. Because as I said, the, he was not in, in, in touch with the people of the, the Old Testament or the New Testament. The, the, uh, he was in, in Mecca. And that Meccan society had no access to this information, especially that the, the literature was not translated. And even if it was translated, it was not. Even if it were translated, Muhammad وسلم, could not read it. Now you have also on top of that, you have, or in addition to that, you have, uh, you look at the content of the Quran Karim. This unlettered man, uh, the man who for 40 years was not known of any of this, all of a sudden he talks about belief systems so he critiques he critiques some beliefs you know about uh, uh, the, the the attributes to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he proves he proves other beliefs and he establishes a proof that is actually irrefutable uh, proofs in the quran al kareem that talk about the the uh, uh, to prove that the, the, the uh, belief system of the Quran of the Quran or, or Islam that are irrefutable so when he refutes for example the beliefs of the of the Christians about the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having a son when he says subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who created the heavens and the earth you know in in an amazing way unprecedented way how could he have a son and he had no companionship because it is the the idea of a son when you say son when you say that there's an offspring that involves a, a companionship that involves a certain process and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has none of that how could you refute such a refutation for that belief or when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in hum hu al-khaliqun were they created from nothing or they're the ones who created you know meaning are they created from nothing or they created themselves they created other things you know all of that how can anyone refute that kind of argument this kind of argument is timeless it can it apply at any time because the given as we talked about the necessary basic uh, uh, intellectual ideas that we have the basic uh, uh, that 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 every that are innate in every human being we know that things don't make themselves you know things don't create themselves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces this Quran Kareem. Rasul sallam brings this argument that is valid until the day of judgment. That it is no, you know, you cannot create yourself. You cannot create, you know, uh, you cannot be made from nothing. Or the one, the people who doubted the idea of the, the resurrection, the idea of the day of judgment. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَ And he gave us an example and he forgot the way he was created. Say, who's going to bring those old bones, you know, back to life? And what's the answer that cannot be refuted? So the one who, who will bring it back to life, the one who created it in the first place, you know, and he is uh, all knowledgeable of everything that's created. So the point here is that these are arguments from somebody who is unlettered, somebody who did not study, somebody who did not learn. You know, these things were simply, you know, presented and they still from now until the day of judgment, if, you know, will stay, how, how can there be, a, how can you, I mean, really after we become dirt, we are going to be resurrected and we are going to go back to, to life, yes. You know, the one who made you to start with is the one who can, is able to bring you back. That argument is ever valid. It's gonna, it cannot be invalidated. And I'm saying that came out 
that was introduced by Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That this is a, a, um, a part of the, the things that uh, unlettered man introduced. With the Quran Karim, and we're talking about the content of the Quran Karim. We're not talking about anything else but the content to see in relative uh, in relationship with the origin. Who introduced the Quran Karim? It talks about legislation. But what how does what does Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam know about a legislation? Where he be, he uh, the Quran presents the Quran presents uh, uh, intricate rules about inheritance, about penal code, about judiciary about a, a trade contracts uh, how you circulate the, the the wealth in the society the the rules of war and peace the relationship the rules that that govern the relationship between men and women the in in a manner that is not time bound in a manner that actually these laws are uh, uh, can be applied all the time at any time these are not laws that you can say they were made for now and then well, you cannot apply them, you know, because they were time bound, they were situation bound. But in general, the general rules of Islam, the Sharia as a whole, or the Tashri'a, the legislation as a whole, it is actually able to be applied in all times and all places. And such a law that was presented in the Quran al Kareem, and I'm, I'm only talking about the Quran al Kareem, you have jurists, you have scholars who spend their entire lives deriving and uh, uh, understanding you know, these rules and uh, to to derive laws from them for people's lives in various societies. And that has been the case for the over for about 14 centuries or so. So that kind of ability to introduce a, 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 um, a tashri' of this caliber, if you look at any society, when you look at the laws, the way that they, they emerge, it is not the job of one person. It's the job of you find committees and committees and then those those rules have to be modified, have to be changed, have to be adjusted because they're no longer this they're now. And they go into like any constitutional studies when they look at, at the, the, the fundamental laws and they start talking about whether we should take them literally or we take them in spirit. Well, you know, and you, so they find themselves having to modify. And But in, in the rules of Islam, really, you don't have to modify. You don't have to, uh, to adjust different situations you all you go back to or new situations new problems you go back to the text and the text you are are rich enough legislatively speaking as a legislative source to derive laws from now until the day of judgment okay and again we will talk about that inshallah ta'ala when we uh, um, when we discuss the the, the, t the details in, in the next series the same quran the same quran tells you tells you about events in the future and they happen over, uh, you know, they happen as a matter of fact. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the battle of Badr, he says, Because the Muslims went out first after the caravan and they missed it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah ta'ala promises you one of the two, you know, events, meaning the either the caravan or the battle of Badr that you, it will be yours, meaning you will be victorious. And sure enough, they won in the battle of Badr and they became victorious. When Allah Ta'ala says, الأرض, That the Romans were defeated far on earth. And after they were defeated, they are going to be the winners or victorious in a few years. And sure enough, the Romans became victorious after that. When Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala tells the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as in the Quran Al-Kareem, لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا بِالْحَقِّ لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِينَ مُحَلِّقِينَ رُؤُسَكُمَ مُقَصِّرًا لَا تَخَافُونَ That uh, Allah Ta'ala has, uh, you know, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so, uh, you know, that he gave him the, the ru'ya, that it is a true ru'ya, true vision, a true uh, dream. You will enter into the Masjid Al-Haram, you will, inshaAllah, and you will be safe. Muhalliqin, and sure enough, they conquered you know, Mecca, and they entered into the, the, the Kaaba, and just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them in the Quran Kareem. So this is, these, these uh, events uh, uh, are coming from a person, from a human being. A human being can predict one thing and maybe hit or miss two things, maybe hit, uh, make, uh, you know, but uh, this is the nature of the Quran al Kareem. It talks about events as a matter of fact, even when they happen in the future. It talks about the past uh, as a matter of fact, 
you know, because it was it, it was presented by, uh, you know, the all knowledgeable and all wise subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know. So th this is, of course, uh, how can it be coming from one person? How can it be coming from one person where it is the, uh, uh, the, the, the entire system, um, even the Sharia, and we talk about the laws that were revealed, you know, one big problem in, in any society is how do you make the people, how do you make the people actually abide by the laws of that society? How do you, do you get the people to, to not just do the, the, the law be for a, a, uh, out of fear of the law, out of fear of the, the punishment, the penal code, but rather out of, you know, to have that uh, belief, that, that uh, commitment to it, out of conviction, out of, you know, uh, and in, in, in the Quran al Kareem, the way it linked, the way it linked between the Aqeedah and the Sharia, ah, between the laws, between the rules, the, the belief system, and the set of rules, meaning between your belief in the Akhirah, your belief in the hereafter, you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you believe in the um, authenticity of the text, in, in the belief in the infallibility of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that aqeedah, the belief in heaven and hell, the belief in, in the, you know, uh, uh, in the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the mercy of Allah ta'ala, you know, all of that and how it is linked, how it is linked with the acts of obedience and how to, it linked with the ahkam of do's and don'ts, that kind of relationship, how can one person come up with it in, in the most successful way, where the, the you have people who were a, uh, you know, they, they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they abided by the law and they followed the, the laws of Islam in secret and in public. Till now, till now, we are 1400 years later and we are the furthest that we can, and as an ummah, away from Islam now in the, in, in the way that the situation of Muslim ummah is, the individuals and how we are, you know, uh, uh, despite all of the, the, the uh, the uh, distractions, despite all of the weakness in understanding, etc. Yet you find, you know, uh, uh, the, the Muslims still pray in public and in private. They fear Allah Ta'ala and they give their zakah in private and public. They, uh, they still uh, do not, you know, steal, they do not uh, commit adultery, they do not do this, do not do this, you know, uh, as uh, out of the same conviction. Of course, the acts of disobedience will always exist. I'm not saying that people become angels, but the overall, the overarching uh, uh, behavior uh, of the Muslims, it's still despite all of the efforts, the efforts in you know to distract them from that path, they still do, uh, they still do abide by it, and they still overall, they still uh, believe in it. And I'm saying that kind of a, a, a creation of an Islamic personality, that kind of link that the Qur'an introduces, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa introduces, cannot be from a man, cannot be from one person who, how to understand the way the human being feels and, and thinks and the, um, to build them, the way the societies are structured, to, uh, to know about the past, to know about the future, to know about, you know, uh, stories even in the ghaib, you know, about uh, uh, the creation, creationism and the, how Adam was created, etc. That thing is not something that is befitting for a, uh, you know, or that, that is not something that is conceivably from a human being, uh, let alone a, a, a human being who's unlettered, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, uh, before I continue, uh, do you, anybody has any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I, I don't see anything written in, in, in the chat, so I'll assume not. Okay. So now if, and but all of this, we were, we're talking about it as, as the content itself. And this is something that any person regardless who they are, they can, they can actually look at it and they can an analyze it and study it. And, and I made sure to emphasize this because, in other words, 
for uh, when we talk about the proof of Prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we talk about the Quran al Karim, you know, immediately the the idea of the 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 Quran al Karim being in Arabic, and therefore you, the the Arabic eloquence being the uh, the miracle of the Quran al Karim, uh, etc. You know, it comes to mind, and and some people view that might view that as an op, as an obstacle. I mean, I don't I don't understand Arabic. But really, even if you, as I said, there are many proofs for the Prophet of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the fact that he, alayhi salatu was, was born in Mecca, raised in Mecca, stayed in Mecca most of his life in that society, with that personality, with that, you know, with, the, with that access to knowledge, and then to introduce the stories of the prophets and the stories of creationism and then the, the or, or cre the creation of Adam alayhi salam and his spouse, the, the the issue of Iblis, you know, and the issue of the, the angels and the, you know, all of that, all of that, heaven and hell and the descriptions, these things were not, uh, that kind of knowledge was not accessible to him. Really the fact that he was from Mecca uh, and he what he introduced in the Quran al-Kareem shows, and of course I'm only focusing on the Quran al-Kareem, I'm not talking about the Sunnah, and the Sunnah is another item, inshallah ta'ala, we will look into as well. But, just focusing on the Quran with its content, with that source, you one can can reach, you know, that can see the proof that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Because the big question is, where did that knowledge come from? Where did, who gave him that knowledge? You know, uh, and of course, uh, you have some Orientalists who raise, uh, or some people raise uh, uh, an issue about uh, waraqa and etc. And we will discuss that inshallah taala in the long series. But the the uh, it's really that's not even worth uh, mentioning at this point. But uh, so next item that is uh, after we're talking about the content, uh, let's talk about actually the the the, uh, the container of the content, how it was introduced, and and whether uh, you know and how the, the the language that was used in in the uh, to deliver such content because the ijaz of the Quran Kareem is is not really um, in in the content that has no contradictions meaning the quran al kareem was revealed over 23 years you are going to have um, um, your level of knowledge as a human being you know you are going to be always we are all stronger in one way in one field of knowledge than another some of us you know, you might be, uh, you know, good in legislative things, in, in, let's say, in judicial things or legislative things, but not very good in history. Or you can be in historical facts, but not in intellectual or strong uh, aqidah. You know, this is, nobody is, is encompassing everything. Even the ones who are strong in everything, you will find still they're stronger in one area over the other. It just, it, it, this is the nature of the human being. And you find that uh, sometimes you, there are areas you know about and there are areas you don't know about. And then when you, when you speak, you'll find yourself making mistakes here and making there. Uh, keep in mind that, of course, in content only, that that did not happen in the Rasul Sallallahu case. Rasul, يعني, the Quran al Kareem was revealed over 23 years. And anybody who knows how the Quran was revealed, we, you know, it was not revealed in, as I said, in one shot, it was revealed in five ayat, ten ayat, you know, uh, a surah, like that. And it was often, often, not always, but often it was in response to an event or an idea or a situation that came up. So you would be, you would have a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sitting amongst the Sahaba. And then he would, uh, the, the wahi, the revelation would come down, you know, uh, upon him, and then he would speak this uh, content, this Quran al Kareem. You know, in a, in a way that cannot be imitated, in a way that cannot be copied, you know. But now leave the way that he was speaking and take the content itself. So the various stages of life between war and peace, between, you know, social relationships, between finance and etc. These are various areas in life. And the Rasul Sallallahu being a human being, he's going to be one, you know, he's going to get something wrong here or something wrong there. That's the logical or the, 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 the if it was a just regular human being. However, you find that there is no variation, there is no contradictions in Quran al Karim. You know, and as that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afala al Quran, Walaukana min Indi Rayri Lahila wajadu fi ihtilafan katira. 
what don't they ponder uh, actually the word ponder does not explain it properly tadabbur uh, it means to go to the end meaning don't they uh, think about the quran from front to end you know think about it from front to end you know uh, uh, had it been from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there would have been great variations great distra uh, you know contradictions in it there would be great variations in content because you know again of the, the, the deficiency of the human being and in the way of delivery in the way of delivery and we'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala coming up but the idea here is that the content itself to be able to sit now if you are if you sit and you write an email or you write a letter you know a paragraph you know you write it now you come back in five minutes later i'll change this word i'll put this word dream i'll put it that you know this is the human nature and you even after you send it you look at it why didn't i send it this way i should have wrote it this way or i you know that changed the meaning this and that and rasul sallallahu would be sitting amongst the people and he would say a statement an ayah you know, a, a group of ayat, and that he would say this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is one shot, not subject to change, not subject to revision, not subject to uh, I misspoke, it should have been this way, um, that information is not accurate really, I should have, not at all, not at all. So how can a human being say that, and we are talking about 1500 years later, we are still studying that uh, 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 content, and uh, really, had it been from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would find the clashes, you would find the contradictions, you would find what you, what you find in our abilities. Especially, keep in mind, even your uh, 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 depth of knowledge hopefully increases with time. If you, if you for example, you, you would experience with reading, with interaction with people, different ideas, different, you know, your level of the depth of knowledge is going to increase you know hopefully and and if that's the case whether it increase or decrease really it doesn't matter but it's going to vary it's going to change it's not going to be constant and yet you find the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in 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 the quran al kareem the quran al kareem is addressing the various topics over the 23 years without that variation in the level of knowledge without that contradiction in the that it is always stating things as a matter of fact not as a matter of you know, I think, I hope, I am not wrong, I am, you know, I, you know, it's a one constant statement about all kinds of affairs that pertain to the human being. Okay, and that's, this is, this is again, just the content. If we go now to the, to the uh, container where the content was produced, which is the, the Arabic language. And the Arabic language actually, without going into my, too much detail, it's enough to say the following. In Arabic, you have two types of speech, you know, two types of speech. It's either poetry or uh, nathir, which is regular speech, you know. Uh, so now when they say that, that poetry, poetry is not an open-ended thing. It has rules, meaning they are, uh, they, they say, they have patterns for how you structure a poem. Um, it is um, when uh, somebody makes a line or two, even if they are according to those uh, rules, they don't call them poetry in, in Arabic. It's, it has to be substantial. It has to be a long uh, poetry. Uh, but the point is, it has certain patterns. It has to follow certain rules for it to qualify as poetry. Or the prose or the regular language that people speak. And in that, in that, there is even a pattern of speech it's called the sajr. A sajr it means to make it rhyme, you know, to make the end rhyme, uh, you know. And of course, and the Quran al Karim, and of course, by the sajr, that rhyming of sentences also has rules. What makes it a good rhyme or a bad rhyme, you know, different from poetry? Poetry has its own rules, and the sajr has its own rules. And uh, each one you have based on those standards you have good poetry and you have bad poetry and you have good sajr or good uh, uh, rhyme or bad rhyme okay and in quran al kareem you find it that it is neither poetry nor prose it is does not function based on the rules of poetry at all so as a matter of fact, they only called it poetry if we study the seerah they only call, uh, called it poetry because they were they did not know how to 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 label it you know because they said the people 
of the the Hajj. This is the Hajj season. Remember the people in in Al uh, uh, Jahiliya, even you know the, the they used to come to the Kaaba for Hajj, even in, in before Islam. So they used to come, and now of course the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the Hajj season would go and start calling the people to Islam. So the the leadership of Quraysh and they were the linguists and the the poets and the people who were uh, known to be the intellectuals, the 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 top, the cream of the, the society. So they, they gathered and said, okay, what are we going to tell the people? You know, one says, well, it's magic. Well, they, you know, it's not magic. It, it, trying to give a description to the Quran because of the way that it, it touches the mind and the heart of the person, the listener. So what are we going to call it? It's magic. And we know it's not magic. Well, let's call it this. It's not, uh, let's call it poetry. It's not poetry. Uh, they know poetry. They themselves were suggesting it because they're looking for a straw. They're looking for something to give to the people. Finally, they said, okay, let's, let's, let's say it's, it's poetry, okay? Uh, knowing that it is not poetry, because again, we know till now, today, we know the rules of poetry, and you can take a Quran al Karim and match it to the rules of poetry that you find it that it does not match it. The, the, the Quran al Karim, even if you find one ayah that might match it or two ayah that match it, but again, it does not, it breaks the pattern again. And it's not like it is, it did bad poetry, because if it was, they would have said it. They would have said, we could do better than this. Because if somebody says, this is not a good poetry, I'll show you where the mistake is. I'll show you where the deficiency in the level is, and I will top it. You know, but of course, the Arabs could not do that. And they stay, even though some uh, part of the nature of the Arab, they're, they're very persistent, they're very, and when they, they, they have an enemy, they go after him, and they had the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, uh, for that, and they went, they went after him, they called him a liar, they called him magician, they called him all kinds of names, you know, and they, they called him under a magic spell and all of this, you know, uh, the a jinni, you know, why? Because they are trying to discredit him, and if they were able to, if it was poetry, and they saw, they saw that this is something that is, that can be topped, they would have definitely tried to top it. Because again, they had that motive, they had that incentive to do it. And the same thing if it was, you know, those, uh, the rhymes. Because just like poetry, just like poetry, the poetry, also, the, the rhymes have also rules. You know, some of the rhymes, for example, you know, uh, you find it in, often repeated in the khutbah of Jum'ah, and they're not necessarily good rhymes or, or bad, but just to give you the, the you know, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salamu ala nabi al Amin, you know, noon, noon. But this is, this is, does not necessarily sajah, does not necessarily uh, see it, it rhymes in the best way. So even in that, in the way that they're supposed to rhyme, it is, there's a, there are rules for the rhyme, and there are rules for what makes it a good rhyme or a bad rhyme, you know? And Quran Karim is not like that. Because the rhyme, always, by design, this is how it is, you're, the, the, what you're after is actually the rhyme itself. And the meaning comes secondary. The Quran Al Karim is not about rhyming, it's the Quran Al Karim is about delivering a content, and yet it delivers it in a way you know, that is very soothing, that is very uh, uh, musical, that's very, uh, you know, soft, you know, to the, you would be hearing the, the uh, you know, I mean, it, it's just that the, the idea is not to deliver something just rhyme for the sake of rhyme, you know, but rather rhyme, you know, it, it, is, it is the meaning, it's the content, and it's presented in a very sweet way, in a very nice way to, 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 for the listener, that the listener does not feel tired of it, the, and likes it even if they don't even understand the content, you know, which is it is something that is a, a very um, a, 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 a not not just unusual; it's just unprecedented, and and it cannot be uh, duplicated. And here is the Quran al Karim, and and uh, let people try to introduce something like uh, like this. And I read some. Uh, you have websites who, who have published, quote unquote, you know, they took the challenge of the Quran Karim to introduce like it, you know, and you find them that really sometimes uh, it's the weak content or sometimes it is uh, the, the, um, the word uh, the, the is, is, it breaks the pattern of the, the, the rhythm. Something gives in for the, the, uh, for the, um, the expense of the other. So if it was just a rhyme, then the Arabs would have actually said, this is a bad rhyme. We can top it. And because then you, again, then you watch what it should be like. You know, if you say something is bad, it means you know that what is better than it. And if they, if it was a rhyme, they would have said, 
this is this is a rhyme and this is because again sometimes take al-fatiha you know take al-fatiha bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alameen okay there's a meme there's a noon that, that's that's not a rhyme you know and then it changes again then it changes again so uh, take al-baqara take take even the small surahs the same thing you find it this way and that way not because it rhymes and then stops because you know in other words it's doing that rhyme and then it changes because that would have been considered a weakness and if it was a weakness again they would have challenged it and they would have said this is a weakness and nobody said this they still they could not figure out how to duplicate the quran al kareem even though they had the incentive they have the motivation you know uh, to do it in reality al quran al kareem is a different type of speech it's a unique type of speech if you uh, you know do you change anything in it you change the word in it it might the the pattern might might continue or the 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 rhyme or the the musical part might continue but you'll find the meaning will be tampered a bit if you change you know a, a you know uh, something at the end you'll find the meaning uh, maybe stayed the same but again the smoothness and the the eloquence of it would have uh, uh, would have been tampered with so it is it is uh, um really uh, inimitable it, it cannot be imitated cannot be introduced uh, uh, like it and uh, the uh, the biggest poet the poets and the the, the you know the linguists um, we are 14 1500 years ago and i hear that it's a free now especially nowadays i mean it's, it's a free show so uh, let let whoever wants to deliver something similar to it uh, some uh, bring something similar to it and there is uh, so you know there is there's none and it cannot be uh, you know it, it cannot be it cannot it cannot take place it is enough in the quran kareem and look when you talk about the, it, th it talks about things even in the future as a matter of fact it does not it's not a matter of opinion you know قُلْ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَاهِرًا say if the jinn and mankind gather together to bring like this Qur'an, they will not be able to. لَا يَأْتُونَ مِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ even if they were supporters of each other. it's a matter of fact. it's a matter of fact. it's not a matter of opinion. it's not I, you know, uh, there is no hesitation in such a statement and uh, you know uh, so they, it will never be matched okay so uh, which means uh, what where does that leave us it means that the the, the speech of the quran al kareem it's neither uh, uh, you know it's not based on the the styles that are common in the arabic language it is something that was unprecedented introduced you know that that the arabs could not produce like it and it is beyond the capability of a human being to produce and you find at the same time just like we talked about the content that you might be good in certain part of the uh, of aspect of knowledge not the other one the same thing the way you express you know if you express an idea about a belief system might be different from let's say like the ayah of surah uh, al-baqarah ayat al dain it's an entire page the verses qul huwa allahu ahad look at the qul huwa allahu ahad or look at al asr and look at the uh, you know ayat al dain the, the ayah of the debt writing the debt and it is an entire page and you find that two different topics one talks about the aqidah one talks about a part of the legislative system and then you find you read this and you read this and these two, each one has its own uh, uh, meaning deep meaning no contradiction in the content and also in the delivery in the in the container in the in the the the, uh, the method was delivered meaning in the arabic language the eloquence of it the musical uh, part of it it still applies each has its own each has its own and even though the topics are different you take the same thing ayat of the inheritance you take the ayat of war in surah at tawbah you take the ayat in surah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you take different ayat different subjects different you know uh, 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 and you look at the the rhythm you listen to the rhythm you listen to the musical tune of it you and you find that it is all you know with no harshness no unless it's intended harshness you know to to be uh, to be presented but the the idea is it's still uh, very smooth and very uh, comforting for for the person regardless of the subject and again this is not within the capability of a human being 
a human being you write poetry somebody is very well uh, you know versed in writing about love you know it's uh, different about writing about politics different right about writing about the economic system you want to write a poetry about the economic system let's see how well you do you know but you're fantastic in writing about that but you know and as an economist you write it and you write poetry about it how about if you write it about you know a, a, a you know marriage or about inheritance or that's exactly what, what it what it is you're presenting something in various areas in a way that is still very soothing and very uh, unmatched that even the person who does not understand the content still likes what they are uh, hearing so this is this eloquence is beyond the uh, delivery or the capability of a human being and as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as i said afala tadabbaruna quran walaw kana min 'indi ghayri allah lawajadu fi ikhtilafan kathira that uh, wouldn't they think about the quran from front to back from end to end and if had it been from other than allah they would have found great discrepancies there is great variations in it so this is a um, uh, um, in in content and in the way that it was delivered now if somebody wants to talk about uh, studying um, the eloquence of the Quran Kareem and understanding where the eloquence etc yes it will require you to be uh, uh, to be to be somebody who is well versed in Arabic not just an Arabic speaker uh, and here we're not talking about Arabic as uh, Arab as a, a race or Arab as a, a lineage we are talking about Arabic ability you know uh, that because it's not even just the knowledge of Arabic, the spoken Arabic, you know, it is the Quran al Karim is not just in Arabic, it's on the highest level of uh, the Arabic language. And you have to have that uh, ability, you know, to, uh, to, to be able to uh, come to that level to understand, appreciate what it, what it is. And of course, if anybody knows, I mean, the more you learn, uh, the more you learn and the higher your, your uh, or the deeper your knowledge in the Arabic language, the more appreciative you are for it. And of course, you hear some, you know, uh, uh, tafsir here and there, that when you read the tafsir, especially um, the ones that are interested in the uh, eloquence of the Quran Kareem, in the, in the language of the Quran Kareem, you know, you start seeing uh, some of the, the words here. And of course, contemporary, you have people, you have many videos on YouTube uh, that talk about that. Uh, and we'll, now we are focusing about about the, the part of the eloquence of the Quran, but to say that for a person to appreciate it, to have that, uh, you know, you need to be on the level of uh, in, in the Arabic language. Now, some people now, because it's a quote unquote, it's the era of science and the era of, uh, you know, um, uh, the experimental science. Now, there's a big trend amongst Muslims to, um, to look at the quote unquote the, the scientific miracle of the Quran al Karim. And inshallah ta'ala, we will address it in the in the subject of al-Aqidah and we'll just uh, give it because it's not really a an all out, nor is it a completely uh, a full uh, stop that uh, there's nothing like that. But there has to be some control so that we keep uh, the 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 you know the level of understanding and the way the method of understanding uh, in check. So the point here is that um uh, this uh, you know and, and if uh, since it is in the arabic language and it requires certain level of uh, of understanding the arabic language that uh, you know it's really an invitation for everybody to study it and to learn it but if you are unable to you're unable to you, you, at the end of the day you are you are going to submit to the to the one who's more knowledgeable than you and to say that well if he cannot match the quran nor can i because he's a well uh, versed in the Arabic language, I'm not, uh, you know, but the, the point here to focus on the content, to focus on the, the origin of the Quran Kareem, meaning the who produced or who introduced, excuse me, who introduced the Quran Kareem, that is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you see whether it is possible or not. Uh, other aspects of it, inshallah, we will talk about later. Now, that takes us to the next point. If the Quran Kareem is the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and it is, then the one who delivers it is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if it is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he's the one who brought the Quran, then the Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger of Allah. And that leaves us, that takes us to the next step. And the next step then for, therefore is that so far 
we have relied on the intellectual uh, approach to studying the Islamic Aqeedah, to the basis of the Islamic Aqeedah. In other words, we talked about let us, uh, you know, let's rely on our basic intellectual abilities to, to uh, you know, that we're, uh, we're relying on our senses to discuss whether there's a creator or not. We, we said that we reached that there is a creator, then we said that you know, uh, based on that, uh, we uh, need require a system because we look at the human being and the way that the the, um, the human being needs a system to run their affairs and to to live their lives, to you know, etc. And we said that requires messengers. And then we discussed uh, again rationally the the Prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that takes us to the next one: is that if that if this is the valid um, source. Uh, you know, or the valid, uh, uh, you know, statement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the book from Allah ta'ala, then it becomes a source for aqeedah. So you will have automatically, you will have what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought, uh, brought is a source of aqeedah along the lines of the intellect or the, uh, or thought. So both become, uh, so become the sources of aqeedah for the Muslim, the rational or the intellect as well as the textual evidence and inshallah ta'ala we will go a little bit detailed next uh, session about the the requirements for the text to be uh, a valid source of aqeedah and uh, then we we um, we build on that inshallah and that will be our next our last um, session for this series we'll take a couple of weeks off you know inshallah ta'ala we will um, start addressing uh, various topics in, in more depth inshallah um, any uh, any questions so far? By the way, I'm not um, I'm not seeing any any anybody in the chats. Nobody said even uh, salam, so I'm not sure if a um, if people are typing and I'm not seeing it. Which is uncommon, strange. Okay, then I I will uh, maybe maybe there's something wrong that I cannot see the the, the chats. But um, if uh, since I don't see uh, questions, I'll assume that there is none or there is a problem. So I will stop here, inshallah. And if there is a question that um, you want uh, address about the tonight's session, please do send it to the institute if. There is, um, for the, um, uh, otherwise for, for the, the, you know, for the future, if you want to discuss them in detail in the next series, inshallah, just send them as a question to an arqam and we'll take it from there. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa ratubu layk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa al-Asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, illa al-ladhina amanu wa anu al-salihati wa tawasub al-sabr, wa tawasub al-haqq, wa tawasub al-sabr, wa akhru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Yazakumullah khair.